One of life's brutal realities is that intelligence, skill, talent, and even genius have zero impact on success. Getting what you want has nothing to do with how hard you work or what you know. Because the simple reality is if we did what we know is good for us, we'd all be skinny, rich, and happy. Therefore, we can say that whilst your knowledge of how to lose weight, make money, and be happy could fill the local library, that same knowledge is translated into sweet FA for most people. The answer isn't your brain power, your work ethic, or your qualifications. It's your behavior. When you behave badly with food, looking like the side of a house is just a matter of time. When you behave badly with money, it'll turn to smoke and vaporize in front of your eyes. When you behave badly with your spouse, they're going to vanish at the same speed. Behaving well involves firstly, understanding which behaviors will get us what we want, and secondly, changing over to those behaviors ASAP. And that's where most people come undone. Doing what's good for us sounds like punishment. When saving some money to put into an investment strategy comes up, up, most of us want to do that about as much as we want to clean the public toilets with a toothbrush. When going on a diet would be a great idea, most of us want to do that about as much as we want to try selling vasectomies door to door. When doing the washing, cooking, cleaning and ironing for a week would give our partner a much needed break, most of us want to do that about as much as we want to, well, uh, do the washing, cooking, cleaning and ironing for a week. Being reluctant to do the hard yards, the unpleasant, the difficult, the uncomfortable, but obviously necessary, is not a new concept. It leads to the obvious question, how do I get motivated to do the stuff that bores me shitless or makes me feel like crap or isn't fun and doesn't deliver? But if you did ask that question, you'd be amongst the eye-watering number of people who look up that exact same term in Google last month and the month before that and the month before that. It's not rocket science to figure out that no one actually looks forward to living on the smell of an oily rag, feasting on boiled broccoli or working all day doing something that needs doing again tomorrow. So here's the real problem. We think that we have to like something to be able to do it for any extended period of time. And the reason we think that we have to like it is that now that we're the adult, now that we're in charge, now that we get to be the boss, we aren't about to do anything we don't want to do. It's a young mind in an old body. Or if that's cutting it a bit too close to the bone, it's an adult tantrum. There's just less throwing yourself down on the floor, screaming blue murder, and more being stubborn, pig-headed, resistant. The problem arises when our logical mind says, now come on mate, you know you need to get that flab off before you have a heart attack and it takes you out. And our response is to stick our bottom lip out and mumble, oh, well, I suppose if I have to. And have to was never written as an inspiring phrase. Have to removes any joy, any fun, any spontaneity, any desire, any yearning, and replaces it with drudgery, work, effort, irritated, tired, worn out. But check out my client, Jack. He's been going to the gym five days a week for 25 years. He doesn't like it. He explains how boring it is to lift the weights up and put them back exactly where they were, how slow the gains are, and how glad he is when each session is finished. He also explains that this is his small picture view. His big picture is being fit, healthy, vital and exuberant into his 90s. He's removed the do I like it question. He's motivated by what he wants in life. He says that the price of living his values is minor compared to the benefit. He likes who he's become in the process of doing what he knows he needs to do. His self-respect is through the roof. He won't eat what others call a treat because his experience is that it slows him down in the gym. He says and he knows nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. He's a master of himself and he values that mastery way above the shape that he's in. By definition, he's motivated. What's his secret? Well, if you haven't worked it out already, he's realized we don't have to like something to go ahead and do it to the best of our ability. We just have to find a reason to get on with what we need to do. That's a bigger part of the picture. Motivation comes from our big picture. When creating a savings and investment fund, morphs from going without to early retirement with a large income, secure, magic happens and motivation's not an issue. When going on a diet morphs from denial and punishment into creating a temple with energy to burn, sleeping like a baby and feeling great, magic happens and motivation is not an issue. When treating our spouse morphs from work into an act of love, magic happens and motivation's not an issue. Therefore, motivation is simply a matter of defining your big picture. My recommendation is for everything that you struggle to find the motivation to do, you ask yourself, what's my big picture? What is my long-term dream? What matters to me more than today's discomfort? Turning inaction, indecision and procrastination into unfailing motivation is a matter of asking yourself those questions instead of the old, how do I get motivated?